Welcome back. In this lecture, I will discuss the obturator nerve. So as usual, let's get started with some anatomy. The obturator nerve arises from the anterior rami of L2, L3, L4 spinal nerve. 2, 3, 4 spinal nerve. The nerve descends through the psoas major. So if you imagine the psoas major is here. From the medial border of the muscle, the obturator nerve then run along the lateral wall of the lesser pelvis. So you see it's going through the lateral wall and extend to the anterior thigh after it pass through the obturator canal. Now, this is very important because only if you want to reliably block the entire obturator nerve before it branches off, uh, you, you need to go at the level of the psoas muscle, and that will be done through a psoas compartment block, or, or, or also known as a lumbar plexus block. Now, as you see here uh, at the pelvis, mostly, it gives you the anterior and posterior branches. At, as it descends down the thigh, it gives you multiple branches. The most important from anterior that it supply the hip from the posterior, it supply, again, part of the hip, part of the knee. However, what's important here that this bifurcation level or this branches, um, it's not always intrapelvic. Indeed, there is a cadaver study here found that uh, this happened in the pelvis only in 23%, while in the, the obturator canal most of the time, 52%, and rarely about 25% in the middle thigh. So again, 75% it's above the thigh. So if you just depend on depending this, doing the block at the thigh level, you're not gonna get both uh, branches reliably. Now, as you see here, once it passed the obturator canal, it branches to anterior and posterior around the obturator externus muscle, and, it, and then it keeps descending down. So the the it descend in the in the again in the psoas muscle, and then pass on the medial margin of the psoas muscle to enter the pelvis. The obturator nerve continues along the lateral pelvic wall, as I showed you to enter the medial compartment of the thigh by passing through the obturator canal, which already have seen the previous slide. It supplies most of the adductor muscles and skin of the medial aspect of the thigh as uh, the obturator nerve enter the thigh and divided into the two branches. So if you look at this uh, picture in the right side of the uh, slide, uh, just focus on the obturator nerve, the obturator externus muscle, which is this muscle. And as you see, the nerve branches off. And this is the pectineus muscle, which is a muscle, it's part of the adductor hip muscles. It uh, originates from the pelvis, uh, sorry, from the pupus and insert in the uh, femur. So here you see the pectineus muscle and this side it's what it's from the from the pupus to the humerus bone and it's, it's just cut it in this view so you can appreciate the branch underneath the anterior branch underneath the pectineus muscle. So um, the when when it goes down when it goes down um, uh, more in the thigh, you have the three adductor muscles, the adductor uh, longus in the front, then adductor brevius in the middle, then adductor magnus. So the way we remember them by Alabama. So AL, adductor longus, AB, adductor brevius, AM, adductor magnus. So as you see, the anterior branch is between 
the adductor longus and previous in the posterior branch usually you know underneath the posterior the adductor previous between the previous and the magnus now here the if you pay attention the the posterior branch um uh, again behind the adductor previous it supplies the um, obturator externus the adductor previous and part of the adductus, uh, adductor magnus the anterior branch uh, it supplies the adductor longus gracilis adductor previous muscle and also contribute to the pectineus muscle and give some cutaneous branches to innervate the skin of the medial side of the thigh okay so how pain related from obturator nerve present or neuralgia um, so again the nerve innervate the medial thigh the obturator externus adductor longus uh, the adductor muscles right so all the adductor hip muscles so if you have a problem with this nerve you will expect some weakness on the uh, hip adduction sensation wise again it's the medial aspect of the thigh and there is some articular branches to the hip and to the knee so how it present the pain usually uh, uh, you have pain or paresthesia uh, along the innervation side and you can have weakness uh, another important thing especially when we do uh, anesthesia or when dealing with um, uh, uh, transurethral resection of blood or tumor is something called the obturator reflex which is uh, when you when uh, it's a stimulation of the obturator nerve uh, during the surgery in the bladder and that can cause uh, leg jerking because of the adductor muscle spasm. Now, how we can get uh, injury of the obturator nerve, usually with hip surgery, hip arthroplasty, or bladder surgery, as we just discussed. So the obturator nerve not run near the infralateral bladder wall and the bladder neck, so it can be injured in the pelvis. Potential indication for nerve block. If you have a chronic hip pain, uh, as, a, as you've seen in my previous lecture, how the hip uh, joint get partial innervation uh, in the anterior medial capsule from the obturator nerve. Another indication will be uh, to prevent the adduction of the thigh during the transurethral bladder surgery. Um, another uh, indication um, for, for chronic pain mainly here uh, when you have someone with paraplegia whatever the, uh, the cause cerebral palsy whatever and these people have some adductor spasticity which is very painful and it can affect you know urination multiple things so it's a it's a good idea to block this nerve or even do uh, new uh, chemolysis for this nerve with, with alcohol or phenol. Uh, it also may provide post-operative analgesia after uh, knee surgery, specifically when we talk about um, uh, when there is an anterior uh, 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 cruciate ligament reconstruction, because often they take a part of a gracilis tendon to the anterior uh, to reconstruct the anterior cruciate ligament so it's that you know part of the obturator nerve innervation so it can be a good idea to block the obturator nerve and if you have above knee amputation now how we do that so generally speaking we have two approaches we have the distal approach and we have the proximal approach the distal approach is what is more common and easier and probably safer so basically you position the patient in this frog-like uh, position and you uh, put your ultrasound probe in the medial aspect of the thigh and you chase um, the pectineus until 
you will find the adductor muscles. So you will see this classic presentation of adductor longus above adductor previous in the middle and adductor magnus. And as you know by now by from the anatomy that we just discussed, so you can block the anterior branch between the adductor longus and adductor previous and the posterior branch between the adductor previous and adductor magnus. Um, it's not uncommon that you cannot see the nerve. However, you know it's running in this level. So the way you, you, you do it, again, this is adductor longus previous magnus, um, it's easier, so we are coming from lateral to medial, lateral to medial, and in plane in this case. So we we'll go all the way under the uh, adductor previous, targeting the obturator nerve. So inject about 5 ml of local anesthetic there. And then pull back the needle to the facial layer between the adductor magnus and previous and put another 5 ml and most of the time that's enough to block the anterior posterior branches of course you can put more if you are not happy with the spread um, so again um, another picture here uh, just to confirm the you know the the anatomy I remind you so sometimes you see the bubble here uh, and here that's that's the nerve. And of course, you can put a stimulator and look for the adduction uh, movement uh, of the hip. So you, you see, once, once you find the femoral artery and nerve, just slide more uh, medial to the inner thigh. And at that level, you see these muscles. So the proximal approach, which is less commonly used, um, basically injection between the pectineus and the obturator externus muscle which makes sense if you remember the anatomy we uh, just discussed because the most likely the nerve star branches branching at that uh, above in the pelvis and above so here um, you target the plane between the pectineus and the obturator externus muscle and there are multiple reported ways how you do it you can do it in lithotomy position you can do it um, in different probe orientation longitudinal um, and i'll show you a few images here so the reported uh, uh, the 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 report that i'm presenting here you place the patient in a supine position then the the ultrasound is oriented sagittal to the pelvic region uh, and you scan between the femoral vessels and the pubic tubercle to visualize the superior pubic uh, ramus and at that level you find the pectineus muscle and the obturator uh, externus muscle and then you insert your needle inferior superior so that's your probe orientation again this is the the the, the approach we are discussing so your pass just a little bit to see um, here the superior uh, pubic uh, ramus and as we just discussed the um, uh, uh, the pectineus muscle, the pectineus muscle insert in the pupus, and underneath that you have the obturator externus muscle. So you are coming inferior to superior to this uh, facial plane. Now um, you have to pay attention to the obturator vessels here, right? Um, which is sometimes problematic. Um, and the advantage, of course, of this approach, it's really a steep angle and it, you can injure the vessels as I showed you. However, it's, it's something to uh, consider as an alternative to the uh, uh, distal approach. And this is another good reference 
if you need to read more about this. Thank you for watching.